It feels like this previously on was cut together by someone who's never watched the show. We have Debbie mad at Omni-Man, Omni-Man mad at the house, Cecil looking for Mark, Amber mad at Mark, ooh, Eve's here, Rudy's new body, Cecil mad at Omni-Man, Debbie looking for Mark, the immortal looking for Omni-Man, and finishing with Mark looking as confused as we are after that barrage of clips, most of which are about as orienting as a big arrow saying, you are here on a slightly bloody but otherwise blank sheet of paper. The Immortal survives this, which I know is rather redundant, but I only highlight it because he really should be called the Humpty Dumpty. As in, he only seems to be immortal after somebody bothers to put him back together again. Mark, we need to talk. Roll the previous episode's commercials? Someone's controlling you! It's me, Mark. It's just me. Believing someone that you think is being mind-controlled when they tell you this. It's time for you to know where I really come from. And roll this week's commercials. My goodness, we're just a hop skip and a would-be invincible at TV sins away from a full deck, and we haven't even hit the title card yet. I am from Viltrum, but... It's not the planet I've told you about. Looks like today's conductor on the exposition train will be Nolan Grayson. The next stop is the planet Filtrum. We have created a perfect civilization. I'd say the compulsory white leotards tell a different story. The perfect civilization would have more than one fashion designer. In order for our people to reach their full potential, we had to remove the weak from our society. Wouldn't an advanced species know that physical prowess is just one facet while measuring the overall strength of a society? What about the architects who dream the buildings into existence? The philosophers who ponder the meaning of life through their tales? Or the scientists who, holy sh! did you see that person get cut in half? That <laughs> was awesome! When it was over, our population was cut in half. But what emerged from the ashes was unstoppable. Since most of the battling we see on screen looks like a bunch of people taking cheap shots at each other when they're not looking, it seems like being weak just means you don't have a spidey sense. Problem is we have no idea how this so-called process of random assassination would ever stop. Wouldn't it keep going until there's just one Highlander left? We needed a better, more efficient way to conquer worlds. I mean, robots, right? The self-replicating ones that expand exponentially would sure do the trick. Of course, that's gonna be a lot harder now that you've killed all the nerds, isn't it? Our most trusted officers were each given a planet to weaken by themselves. Over the course of 20 f***ing years? Even on his own, I'm sure Omni-Man could have conquered Earth in six months max. What's he been doing? I can maybe understand if he spent that time convincing Earth's governments that Viltrumite rule was in their best interest, but it never even comes up. 20 years of superheroing and father figuring and for what? We need to get Earth ready to join the Viltrum Empire. But why? To paraphrase a certain captain of the Enterprise, what does God need with a human? Viltrumite DNA is so pure you're nearly full-blooded. Is nearly full-blooded really going to be enough for a species that thanos half of its actually full-blooded population for being too weak? But we can help them. We can stop wars, eliminate hunger. Omni-Man's burden. I do love your mother, but she's more like a, a pet to me. Show's dropped enough hints at Nolan and Debbie doing the horizontal mambo, the biggest being Mark, that I'm now hoping Nolan just never learned the proper use of the word pet. What do you think is gonna happen? That I'm gonna go enslave my friends for a bunch of aliens I've never met? Built for my kids. Being able to give this much side eye without ever turning your head. I truly hope Mark lives up to his name. He's gonna say it, isn't he? To face his father and survive? A lot of build up on this one, huh? He'll need to be. Wait, what? What is this? Okay, that's just me having a bit of fun. I mean, if you're gonna be that predictable, you really leave me no choice but to make my own fun. Everyone in this group apparently attended classes at the Chicago campus of the Rickon Stark School of Running Away From Things. Calculating the relative weights of Abraham Lincoln's head, an asteroid flying through space, and this falling building is an amount of math that is very much above my pay grade. That being said, this show is doing an insufficient job of helping us understand how heavy anything is for these powered individuals. So even though this building may actually be heavy for Invincible, we have no way to tell if that makes sense or is just what the story needed at the moment. Ironically, we missed this in a previous episode, but as one of our great communicators once said, Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me, a fooled man can't get fooled again. So the sin, as always, is annihilus. That was your fault. Your stubbornness against the inevitable killed those people. Confusing stubbornness with Newton's laws of motion. How can you say those things? I suppose we're meant to believe Cecil's getting this footage from the little flying ball things they introduced earlier. So here's a sin for convenient footage provided by convenient tech, which Nolan is conveniently not destroying. Maybe this time you'll learn. We can't show much more of this scene, so instead, enjoy these royalty-free pictures of puppies while I remove a sin for the sheer brutality of this train sequence. This is exactly the sort of shit an actual supervillain would pull to demonstrate to Mark how fragile humanity is and how they're powerless to resist Voltramite supremacy. Aw, <laughs> oh, puppies.
I see you almost die to protect them. Maybe you were a Viltrumite when you came to Earth, but you've changed. Saying this to your father after he just used your face as a weapon of mass destruction. I don't know if this is a Viltrumite quirk, but I feel like Mark's suit shouldn't be moving independently of the blood that's covering it. Omni-Man is like breaking the sound barrier right now or some shit. So again, where is this footage coming from? If Cecil brought Joseph Kaczynski in to direct, we have a right to know. Omni-Man is a dick to this boat. Twice. I can always start again. Make another kid. Nothing in this season has really answered the question of why Nolan had a kid in the first place or why he did such a bad job of indoctrinating Mark into his whole master species belief system. I mean, not that I wanted that, but we all know you have to start such things pretty early. <laughs> right? If I have to watch this game, I'd have a better view from above. Believing the only thing preventing baseball from being watchable is altitude. This is a waste of everyone's time. There's so much more I could be doing right now. Well, yeah, but it comes with my Amazon Prime subscription, which is worth it for the two-day shipping alone. And this show is by no means the worst. Oh, we're still on baseball, aren't we? When he feels joy, we feel joy. We interrupt this flashback, which interrupted a truly epic superhero ass beating to bring you Debbie explaining the unshakable bond between parent and child. And as sweet as that is, it ends up making the scene entirely... <laughs> Mark plays stickball really well, and everyone cheers, and that is a lie. Who cheers for someone else's kid? In fact, there are only five other people here in the bleachers, and if the teams are even, the four blue-shirted kids here mean there should be at least eight kids total. Now, unless none of the blue-shirted kids have parents that love them enough to put up with baseball, why is everyone cheering for Team Red? Mark's blood not being invincible. I can't begin to explain the devastation. All the important people just so happen to be tuned into the same news position channel at this exact time. Show continues to give us updates on the whereabouts and goings on of the Mahler twins when, at this point, we don't care. And if we're honest, did we ever? This Hatem book. The Guardians of the Globe and Adam Eve are on the scene. Okay, the Guardians mean well, but rescue operations like this are incredibly complicated. I doubt Duplicate has a clue how to safely remove this child from these iron bars, and don't even get me started on Rex Splode literally blowing up rubble to find survivors. To keep you and Mark safe. Nolan Grayson officially died when the house across the street exploded. Sure, won't look at all suspicious that Nolan Grayson, who looks identical to Omni-Man, died on the same day that Omni-Man went on a rampage and also disappeared. At least Clark Kent had f***ing glasses and a different hairstyle. And don't be alarmed if you see yourself a mark on the news. We sent proxies to the funeral. They've already had the f***ing funeral without even telling Debbie Nolan is dead? And the media were there? Holy sh! Won't Debbie's friends and family think it a bit odd that they weren't invited? No one was doing everything under my nose and I never saw it. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I didn't make things as right as they can be. Oh my, that wasn't a jab right into Debbie's heart. This devious prick just angered me so much that I was compelled to give this a sin. But then I realized I felt that way because his character was written and performed so well that he made me feel a feeling which compelled me to remove a sin. But then I realized that making me feel anything against my own will is an automatic ad, so... Also, saying Nolan was doing everything under my nose would be overselling it a bit. I mean, he did kill the Guardians of the Globe, but aside from that, all we have evidence of him doing is raising a family, writing travel books, and saving the world occasionally. I said stop! Just a reminder that Monster Girl can only do this a certain amount of times before she Benjamin buttons herself into oblivion. Was posing for the Discount Avengers glory shot really worth that? We get it. They're a team now. Moody montage of life returning to normal set against an equally moody indie song. Cliché. The animators, who obviously took advantage of a sale at the generic green backpack store. The angle on this shot is weird and makes it look like Debbie is sleeping standing up against the wall. But the real issue is that with all the bullshit technology at his disposal, Cecil still couldn't get her a bed. Wait a minute, you know he's invincible? Oh man, you know too? Oh, thank God, I thought I blew it. You did. But fortunately for everyone involved, these slip-ups tend to only happen when both parties are already aware of the secret and the plot just needs them to both get on the same page as quickly as possible. You've been drifting in and out for almost two weeks, but my guy's got you patched up good. Taking credit for someone else's power of invincibility. Invincibut. The water America drinks so conveniently from their taps is laced with a chemical that inhibits the ability to see certain frequencies of light. Using your show to invent insane conspiracy theories is all fun and games until someone attempts to cure themselves with magic rocks, invest their life savings in a psychic stockbroker, or awards an Oscar to Army of the Dead. There's enough actual madness in the world without having my animated shows add to it, thank you. You and everyone else in America do not have the ability to see the things in this room. You'd be surprised how often we use this. I swear the show is making this description just vague enough to make me look like a dick for questioning it. But the show forgets that I have zero issues looking like a dick, so here we go. Let's assume that the chemical in question has been invented without a single whistleblower coming forward about this tampering with the water table. How does this work in the real world? 
okay, this room is flooded with that light, but how do you use it outside of this room without it looking like a sudden white void of nothingness has suddenly appeared? We monitored your father until he left our solar system. He didn't change trajectory, so he's going somewhere pretty damn far away. Nor he waited until he knew he was out of range and then changed direction. Basically, Cecil, you don't have a f***ing clue, so don't you stand there and expect me to take your retina-altering dihydrogen monoxide quietly. Guess who's finally getting his power? <laughs> Previously on Invincible. Again. You know, Omni-Man is my... You said your dad was killed when a gas line blew up across the street. Not that hard to figure it out from there. Right? What did I just say? Oh man, it's so good to see you're all right. I mean, after everything on the TV about you and Omni... William f***s this up again. And again, it doesn't matter because the person who he thinks doesn't know the secret, and really shouldn't know the secret, knows the secret. Someone's flying towards Earth from deep space. We're still trying to figure out who it is, but... Writers thinking we would fall for this Omni-Man returning to Earth fake out with less than 10 minutes left in the episode. You know about Mark and Omni-Man now, so you might as well know about me. Why? What kind of logic is that? This is like Cecil saying, Welp, you know about the Invisi potions we've all been pumping into your faucet, so you may as well know about the aliens that killed Kennedy, or the AI from the future that now runs the planet after manipulating the internet into creating the Snyder Cut, just as a demonstration of its power. From the sounds of it, I'm the one who should be apologizing if I'd checked my orders properly. I would have seen that Earth was flagged for Viltrumite takeover. Yes, but that would have been mighty inconvenient for a series that depends on keeping its main character in the dark until the finale. Much better to make you exactly as incompetent as the plot requires until it doesn't anymore. Can't imagine what you're going through. Literally. Never even met my father. <laughs> I'm sitting this season for not having more Seth Rogen. I mean, Alan the Alien. What's the plan in the meantime? How do you say next season on Invincible without saying next season on Invincible? You think you've been f***ed by a train? Have you even smoking any pot today? How high are you? Thumbs up their asses. Thumbs up their asses. Do you have any idea how much I make a year? I mean, even if I told you, you wouldn't believe it. Hey, Buzz! You're flying! This isn't flying. This is falling with style. Look what they need to mimic a fraction of our power. Danger zone. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. I exist only to protect Krypton. That is the sole purpose for which I was born. Uh. Oh my. That is a no-no. Did you see that? Did you see? Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> I've seen better swings on a playground. Wait a minute, where are we? You are no longer part of the system. You are above the system. Over it. Beyond it. We're them. We're they. We are the men in black. <laughs> <laughs>